The Orange Blossom Classic is our game of the week. Yesterday, we had North Carolina Central quarterback Walker Harris, and today we have his head coach, Trey Oliver, joining the show. Oh, yeah, it's Locked On HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked On HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South. Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports Editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Make a Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. Just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy fixes tired fast with zero sugar and a very comfortable and convenient portable size. It's the perfect pick me up for any time you need to get stuff done. Go to fivehourenergy.com and use the code Locked On CFB to receive twenty percent off your order. And this is an offer that's only valid until September thirtieth. You can't use it with any other promotions, but you can go to fivehourenergy.com today. Trey Oliver joins the show, North Carolina Central head coach. We had his quarterback, Walker Harris, yesterday. Matter of fact, we open up today's show discussing a story that Harris had and then also how the offense changes with Harris at the helm. Afterwards, we get into the Orange Blossom Classic and wrap it up with some of the history that North Carolina Central has made during Trey Oliver's tenure. All right, Coach Oliver, I tried to put Walker on the spot yesterday and ask him for a good story about you. He said, I don't know if I can get one, but he did mention that you may want to talk about the time that you beat him in putt-putt. So before I forget, do you have a story about you versus Walker Harris in putt-putt? All right, let's let's clear this up. Every year um, when we finish uh, uh, summer session, summer school, we got to take the guys to um, ride go-karts, putt-putt, laser tag, and all that stuff. So I got uh, Max Yurin, our linebacker, and Walker Harris. Both of them think they're average golfers. And they've been running from me on the golf course. So I got them on, on, on a putt putt little deal. And um, no, I didn't. Walker did not beat me. Walker did not beat me. Walker cannot beat me in any sport. Okay. First and foremost. Now, I will say this he did beat me in chess uh, last week for the first time. And I was, I was, I was very disappointed in myself. You know, uh, I had to go get therapy and everything else like that. But, um, Athletically, Walker's not in the same tax bracket as me, not in the same class. Uh, putt, putt, golf, he doesn't want to see me. Yeah, he, he, he told he said that you would have something good to say about, about you beating him in putt, putt. <laughs> I should have asked him about chess. You're lucky that you went second because I might have asked him about that moment. But now you got him on your football team as your starting quarterback, right? What do you envision being the biggest difference between the Davius Richard era and then also the Walker Harris era? Well, um, both of them were outstanding quarterbacks, and I think uh, uh, Davius Davius came in early and got a lot of playing time as a true freshman. And you know he was really, uh, he, you know, he was a leader of the team, leader of the offense. Uh, now that he left, <clears throat> uh, I think we're gonna have a lot of guys having breakout seasons because a lot of guys understood that that Davius was the man, and you know it's kind of like an alpha male type deal, and we had a lot of role players. It's kind of like Michael Jordan when he comes in the huddle. Or LeBron, everybody really gonna stop talking. But um, uh, now Walker is definitely a leader and has those qualities and capabilities. But I think we're gonna have guys that are gonna kind of come out of their shell, um, uh, offensive linemen that have, that have been more vocal, and then we have some skilled guys, some receivers that uh, have really started to blossom. So I think you're gonna see some other guys step up uh, in some roles. But Walker, uh, great talent. Um, most guys in the situation would probably transfer. Because he came in, he sat behind Davius for two or three years. Um, but he was patient, learned the offense, and, and um, now it's his opportunity. He's got the keys to the car. So I'm, I'm so excited to be able to see him play this year and, and see what he's going to do. Now, 
tell me how accurate this is. When I look at Walker Harris taking over for Davius Richard, this almost feels like when you have a vet quarterback who you know is about to retire on the professional ranks and you draft the rookie and he's been sitting for a couple of years. So now he comes into the game and boom, he has everything, all the tools. He's prepared. He's not like your normal first year starter. That's what this feels like to me. Definitely. But, you know, one thing, the big difference, I think, is, um, you know, I had a plan as far as developing our number two quarterback. So, you know, a lot of people talk about experience, experience. The only way guys are going to get experience is about getting reps. And for us, it was quality game reps. So Walker, a lot of folks don't know, but Walker played in all 12 games last year. Uh, started against Mississippi Valley, but he saw action in every game we played last year. So uh, he's gotten quality reps. He's battle tested. Um, when he goes into the huddle, uh, guys aren't, you know, looking crazy. Uh, he takes command of the huddle and the team believes in him. The coaches believe in him. So, um, uh, you know, we never thought we were going to miss a beat, you know, with him going to the game. And I always felt that way because I remember going into that Valley game, you kept calling him a starting quarterback over and over and over. You kept calling him a starting quarterback. And that, to me, spoke a lot of volumes of how you viewed him and how close were, were they treated as far as, all right, we're going to take this amount of reps in practice in order to keep Walker Harris prepared just in case he ever had to go into the game, which we know he did frequently. Right. Well, we, we're going to always uh... – we're going to have two quarterbacks that are going to get about the same amount of reps because you never know uh, when somebody's going to go down or, or what's going to happen. And then we also, you know, give a get a third guy um, somewhat ready. So we, we give a, our third quarterback some reps, but our ones and twos usually split reps for the most part. Okay. Now, it's not just Davis Richard that you're, <clears throat> that you're losing from this previous season, right? You're also having some key players in the secondary that are departing. How do you expect to replace some of the big name players that you had a defensive back? Right. We, um, I think it's about recruiting. And I think my guys, our coaches staff did a great job of, of identifying talent and, and uh, closing deals and getting some guys in here. So we have some, this might've been our best class that we recruited signed since I've been here. Uh, the class we just bought in. Uh, they are young though. You know, they, they baby boys. So, you know, you got to kind of spoon feed them a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me. And don't try to give them too much, but, uh, we have some very talented young guys that I think can come in and help us right away, but uh, you don't want to play too many freshmen too early. Right. Right. Now, you know what? I'm glad you said that. You talk about not wanting to play too many freshmen and, and loving this class. One thing you've been adamant about, and we'll get back to kind of this roster, but you've been adamant about not recruiting transfer players. Has some of the success that you've had recently maybe made you say, all right, I have a certain standard. I want to recruit some transfer guys so that we don't have any sort of dip with the amount of youth that we play. Yeah, you're going to, I mean, uh, I had to revisit that this off season. You know, we lost, I think five or six guys, six or seven guys in transfer portal, um, all conference guys, starters. So, you know, you can't replace a all conference player, a three year guy with a true freshman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to, I can't be hard headed and, and just say, it's going to be this way. It's going to be this way. So, um, uh, I will bring in some transfers in the future, uh, but it's all for me. It's all about culture and mm -hmm. guys that fit our culture and what we do. It's a whole lot of four stars out there that don't fit our culture, and it's a lot of one and two stars that I'd be more than happy to get that are that are that are good teammates, good people that fit what we're trying to do. You know, our team GP is over 3.0. Uh, we did over 5,000 hours of community service last year. Um, this summer, we didn't have one guy that needed summer school to be eligible. Everybody was eligible in May. So, you know, guys were just coming to summer school just to be here over the summer and working out. And this might be the first time in my 26 years of coaching that everybody was eligible at the end of second semester. So, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And I think that's a, that has a lot to do with our success is the culture and the building. So I will take transfers moving forward, but, you know, they got to fit the culture. So, first off, you got to excuse this chair. This chair is broken. I don't know if you're seeing this. Do you see the chair keep dropping? No matter how many times I get up. Way, man. That's why I, said I got some new furniture coming uh, <laughs> in a couple of days, man. So uh, we both going to have to upgrade. I'm finna get on my Trey Oliver press conference vibes, and I'm finna just stand up. That's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm finna do, coach. Because this chair got about one more time for it to break. All right? And I don't know why I wanted to act this way right now. I was sitting in this chair for 30 minutes before you came on here. And now I want to start dropping. All right. I see what pressure. We ain't got pressure players in the building. All right? We don't have pressure players in the building. And that is the problem. 
Um, but I don't want to sit here and act like my chair is not going down and I keep trying to put it back up. Um, <laughs> no, you good, cool man. So, uh, but coach, you talk about culture fits and you talk about want to get transfers because, you know, things change and not being bullheaded or anything. Right. But what's the difference between evaluating the culture fit of a transfer guy who's coming from a different program versus a, a high school guy who's coming from the high school ranks? Is that a different evaluation process, strictly speaking about culture? Well, um, no, I think it's, it's 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 really the same formula. It's like when you go to a, 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 a football camp over the summer and you see a group of 10 guys, young kids, and you see, you know, eight guys are really locked in. And you see re- two really silly kids. You know, you go to the mall, a group mm-hmm. of kids and two of them are like really silly. Um, those are the ones that's going to struggle, you know. So when we go to the high school, we try to talk to the guidance counselor, um, you know, teachers, whoever's in the building. We try to, you know, get as much information as we can on them. Uh, but dealing with the high school kid, you know, I like the fact because they like you, they love you, they want to come to your school. You know, a lot of times transfers, they don't have any place else to go. And you're their last option. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, they might say the right things or whatever the case may be, you know, to get into the building. But then they want to complain about the facilities or, oh, when I was at Notre Dame, we had this, we had that. And y'all only have three helmets. We had eight helmets. So, um, you know, calling position coaches, coordinators at other schools, uh, high school coaches. So you anybody that we can get, you know, any film or anybody we can talk to. We try to get like the CIA, man. We try to do a background check. and. <laughs> And check off all the boxes, but <clears throat> we've done a pretty good job of, of bringing the right guys in here. Um, but there's no real formula to it. It's just you know you got to do your homework. Yeah, no, nah, and you know what? I'll say this: I think that the recent years have proven that you guys have done a good job doing your homework, right? If if we're looking at that, you've been straight A students. Matter of fact, I think that that promise of what you've been as of recent is a big reason on why, despite not winning the MEAC last year, you were predicted to finish first this upcoming season depending on what fan base you talk to depending on, on how, how you feel about that right but i know who i know how you feeling and why do you think the reason that the MEAC coaches and everybody voted north carolina central to finish first place in the MEAC? i mean what well, they said about it work and if you look at us you know uh the last two years we were top 25 team um national champions in 22 and you know, went to the playoffs last year. But if you look at our non-conference schedule, the teams that we played out of conference, <clears throat> we played a very tough non-conference schedule, and we've beaten a lot of those teams. Um, 22, we went up and played a ranked New Hampshire team and beat them at their place. Um, uh, we beat Tennessee Tech at their place. Last year, we beat Elon. They were a top 25 team at their place. We beat Campbell, uh, Mississippi Valley, North Carolina a t We've had success out in the non-conference. And how many teams in, in HBCUs are having success out of conference? So uh, the record speaks for itself. And, and people tend to say things and feel some type of way, but, you know, I speak facts. And the facts can stay on their own. The numbers can, can stand on their own and speak for themselves. So compare our record to whomever record you want to compare us to. Enough said. Now, matter of fact, let's move into another one of your non-conference games. You got the Orange Blossom Classic coming up, and it's you versus Alabama State. I want to break down that game and some of the intricacies of it as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. And I don't know about you, but early in the morning and after lunch, those are the two times when I really feel like I struggle with energy depending on the day, right? Maybe I just didn't feel like waking up that day. It was a little bit too too difficult for me to get out of bed, but I rolled out and got it done. I just don't have much energy to go through the rest of the day. Or maybe it's after lunch. I ate good. I can't afford to have the itis because I have too many things I need to do, whether that's prepping for a show or writing an article. That's why I love five-hour energy. First off, They're in a very small, portable size, so I can take them wherever I go, whenever I need them. It's not like I have to wait five hours to make it. I don't have to. It's a very small size. Boom. Take it. Energy for five hours after that, whether that's in the morning to help me push through some of those groggy moments or if it's after lunch to make sure I avoid to have the groggy moments at all. My favorite flavor personally is Tropical Burst, but you can get watermelon. You can get grape. You can get berry. All you have to do is go to 5hourenergy.com. That's number 5energy.com, and you will get 
20% off with the promo code locked on CFB and it's valid until September 30th. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. Make sure you're checking out Locked On College Football because this is airing today on Thursday. Matter of fact, right after you're hearing us, there may be some college football that you're turning on. So make sure that you're checking out Spencer McLaughlin to break down the biggest uh, transfers, to break down the conference realignment, to break down everything on the FBS level. I got you covered with the HBCU. So go ahead and go to Locked On College Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, have with me, North Carolina Central head coach, Trey Oliver. Thank you for joining the show yet again. So my chair is acting better, um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> but you have this Orange Blossom Classic coming up. And this is the MEAC SWAC challenge. No, it's not. But it is still a MEAC opponent versus a SWAC opponent. And if I had to guess, these type of games mean more to you because you've always spoken about how you feel like the MEAC doesn't get its just due. Why do you feel like the conference as a whole doesn't tend to get the respect that you think it deserves? I don't know. I don't know if there's a lot of the the, um, the media is from the South or, or they cover more. They went to SWAC schools, whatever the case may be. And, you know, I say a lot. I've spent a lot of time in SWAC. I was I was at Grambling yeah. for uh, four years and I was at Southern for three years. So um, I, I spent plenty of time in the SWAC and, you know, um, I know they play really, really good football down there, but. Uh, I think that that sometimes when you see the um, even the Black College Hall of Fame, you see those nominees, and it, it takes a long time for some of the MEAC folks to get in there, man. I just saw Richard Huntley going this past year, and he was like the all-time leading rusher in um, all of the division, all of all of NCAA for a while, and definitely in in, in Black College. But um, I don't know. I just think sometimes you look at these polls and you look at some stuff, and you know. Uh, I think our guys sometimes should be ranked a little bit higher. But, you know, I can't do anything about the polls. I can just try to get my football team ready and prepared and go out there and play good teams. But, but you know, like you said, Orange Blossom is coming up, Alabama State. Uh, this might be the, the MEAC swag challenge if you look at it, you know, one versus one. But they mm -hmm. got a heck of a team, man. And Coach Robinson is a is a very good coach. And they had a, they had a good season last year. So um, we got a work cut out for us, man. This is going to be a dogfight. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if this game happens a second time. And I think everybody can read between the lines. It ain't quite difficult to do that. But um, one thing that's interesting is the battle of the quarterbacks. Both of you have new starting quarterbacks, Walker Harris versus Andrew Body. But Body has a season worth of film, which can't really be said for Walker Harris. Do you think that that gives you a slight or if, if any kind of edge in the preparation department? Because you actually have seen this quarterback for more time of a uh, of a season really well you know that was, i think that was what the 2022 season because he was banged up last year yeah um i don't know if that helps us or what you know we just got to be prepared to play we watched all the bodies uh high school film we watched them in college at texas southern um we watched jonas the other kid from eastern illinois we watched his, his college film as well as the high school film so we prepare for both quarterbacks uh they got some outstanding receivers um but we had to be able to contain body, uh, keep the ball in front of us. Because, like I said, those are receivers they have, those guys can fly. They got some speed. And um, uh, Walker has just got to let the game come to him. Don't try to press. Don't You don't always have to make the big play. You know, just take what's open, be patient, and, and you know, he'll make plays because he's, he's, a, he's a gamer. Now, also, as I'm looking at them, I'm thinking about the, the, the games in Miami. And you spoke about this, about how you need to be prepared. You need to have bodies because at the end of the day, it's hot. And matter of fact, we saw that in the in the MEAC SWAC Challenge where we've seen some of Norfolk State guys where they were throwing up their lunch on the field. You know, so being able to have depth is important. How are you feeling about your depth going into the, the season? Well, last week it was a hot, hot, like 83 degrees. So I don't, I don't know that hot 83 is going to get us ready for Miami, man. I wish we could have had a little bit, a little bit uh, hotter, hotter practices here. But, um, you know, I don't, you, you can't get in game shape until you play in games. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going to have to play a lot of people. Um, you can't simulate the heat. So, you know, it's, it's going to be hot. We know it. We know that. So we just got to play. That's it. And then when guys get tired or, or cramp up, whatever, you know, next man's got to get ready. So 
um, you know, it's football. Like I said, you know, we do this every year. So um, they're young. <laughs> They'll be fine. The coach is the one you got to worry about. <laughs> and I was in Charlotte uh, in July. I don't know if I sweat. No, I don't think I sweat one time coming from Texas. So yeah, it's it's definitely a different type of heat. There's there's no simulation. Have you tried anything as far as I don't know what what you could do to simulate heat? No, you can't. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. So uh, we did have a hot practice yesterday, but um, the humidity is nothing like it is down in Miami. So uh, we just have to hydrate. We've been preaching that. Um, our sports medicine team and our strength staff they have a plan in place for that. So um, we'll be ready. I guys, I think we're in pretty good shape. So I don't, I don't think the weather is going to play too, too much of a factor. Of course. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this part, this part of it. So you have the first game of the season where you don't know exactly what Alabama State is going to look like. They don't know what you guys are going to look like. But what is your, your biggest focus point coming into Week One, knowing that you may not have the full story on game film? It has nothing to do with Alabama State. It's all about mm -hmm. North Carolina Central. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eagles cannot beat Eagles. So we can't beat ourselves. Um, we can't have a lot of penalties. We can't have a lot of the pre-snap infractions, false starts, jumping off sides, you know, 12 men on the field, delay game. We got to play a clean game. Uh, we know they're going to make plays. They're a good football team. But we can't do things to put ourselves behind the chains. Uh, we can't do things to, you know, put, put ourselves behind eight balls. So um, we just have to play a good, a good game, complete game, and don't beat ourselves. And I think that, um, if we if we can do that, we'll have a great chance of winning this football game. Now, one of the Alabama State players, James Burgess, he had uh he said basically, I believe in Alabama State to go out there and win the game, right? You saw the eye emoji, right? That ain't what he said. That, you want me to say what he said, coach? Yeah, he said he's gonna they're gonna whoop us. They're gonna whoop him. He said they're gonna whoop y'all, yeah, right? Exactly. Like okay, you put the eye emoji. What was the eye emoji about, coach? It's what what was that I about? I see you. I see you. But the game has changed, man. Like, my man ain't even start last year. And, like, he chirping like that. Like, come on, dog. He's a good football player, man. But, like, he didn't start. He is. He's a good football player. I like Burgess. But I thought it was interesting because you double back, like, two weeks later. I was something, something made me feel like you saw it when it was said. It was like, nah, I can't let it. I can't let this slide, bro. I'm just going to let you know. I see you. I had to look at my notes again, like who, who's my man? And because I, I didn't, the name didn't ring a bell at first. And then when I looked at my notes and, and come on, coach, that's how you feeling. What you mean? That's how you feeling, coach. What do you mean? You know what, man? This is this I didn't is know who the brother was when he first made a comment. So man, then when I went a... back and looked at some stuff, and I said, Don't oh, do that, man. coach. <laughs> this what is why this is why I love you, man. Because I've said this multiple times on the show. There's a handful of coaches in black college football that I would play for, right? And you're one of them because you don't I hold your tongue. That. You don't hold your tongue. In a, in a day and age where coach speak is prevalent, you don't do that. Why Why don't you subscribe to coach speak? Because I don't have time to be playing games. Y'all going to sit here. We're going to have an interview and have a conversation. We're going to have real talk and candy conversations. And it's not disrespectful to anybody. They had a heck of a corner that went to New England, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And the other kids returning. So, uh, yeah, they got, you know, Burgess 6'3", long kid. Can, you know, very long corner and all that stuff. Good football I'm player. I'm going to leave it alone, Coach. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. I'm going to move on back to North Carolina Central and, 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 and isolate on them and what you've been able to do in your time with the Eagles as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. Football is here, man. College football is tonight, right? You already have week zero. You got uh, college football really going into full effect on Saturday. Professional ball comes back on Thursday with the Kansas City Chiefs. This is major. This is the time that I live for. This is utopia to me. And the only thing that can make it better for you is if you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. And now if you put down a $5 bet, you'll get three Free weeks of the NFL Sunday ticket by way of YouTube and YouTube TV. I mean, what else do you need to be sold on? Right. It, if, if, if making a season more fun isn't enough, how about you get three free weeks of being able to watch every single professional game that there is to watch? Now, all you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, locked on, put your money down on college football, professional football, futures, 
talking about season long bets, uh, Super Bowl champs, or you can just go to week one and get an immediate payoff. It's just that easy. Go to fanduel.com slash locked on to make every moment more. Today's episode is also brought to you by Factor Meals. And I understand you are trying to get in shape. Some people talk about the summer, Bob, but people who really work out understand it doesn't matter if it's the summer, doesn't matter if it's the winter. Health is wealth, and it's about taking care of yourself. It's just that simple. So you can fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. I understand that you may be busy. I understand that you may have a lot going on. And you're like, man, I, I don't have time to go meal prep and do all of these things. That's okay. You have the time to put it in order, and you have the time that it takes to warm up the meal. It's only two minutes. No matter what you're doing, you have two minutes to warm up a meal to make sure that you can eat. Because whatever else that you eat is going to take more than two minutes to go ahead and get ready or get to you. So it's just that simple. Go ahead and go to Factor, right? Go ahead and get with them. They're Protein Plus, Calorie Smart, Keto. They have all of these different options. So however you want to eat is the way that you'll get it done. Now, go to uh, factormeals.com slash locked on college 550. Use the code locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box and plus 20% off your next month. That's the code locked on college 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next order. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that at North Carolina Central head coach, Trey Oliver. And I want to ask you about that first recruiting class, because to me, this is something special, right? That first recruiting class is what spearheaded the Celebration Bowl victory. How, how sweet does that make that win, knowing that you got it with the guys that you really came in with? Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, we we... Did it the right way. We recruited high school student athletes, brought them in and, and developed them. <clears throat> they stayed the course. Uh, we had a great coaching staff and um, went through a whole lot of adversity. You know, my, my first year was tough here. Then we had COVID. Then kind of got our feet underneath this. And, and um, you know, you finally kind of see the fruits of your labor pay off. And that was a blessing, you know, to be able to come back to alma mater and win a national championship game with, you know, the, the guys that you brought in. That, that was huge for us. Now, you you also I feel like we've spoken about what you have done over the history of really like these last couple of years have been extremely strong. You had the Celebration Bowl victory. Then you had the FCS playoffs. What's the difference between those two events? Obviously, one's HBCU centric, one isn't. But just what's the difference beyond that? Well, I mean, you know, the the, the Celebration Bowl is an unbelievable event. Um, uh, those guys, you know, do a great job putting that, that game together. In Atlanta, it's usually a huge crowd there, a lot of events around the game, a whole lot of pageantry. And the beautiful thing about it is you see, you know, everybody's there from all black colleges. Uh, it's, it's just it's a great sight. Um, obviously, that's a national championship game. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we were a little disappointed because, you know, we didn't make it to the Celebration Bowl, uh, but had the opportunity to get, you know, go to the playoffs. And, you know, at large seed, going to the playoffs. Um, now you're competing on a national stage, uh, you know, versus everybody in the country. And um, that was a great opportunity. First time in school history, we went to the Division One national playoffs. Um, great experience for our guys. Um, we were in the game. I think we were up going into halftime, and it kind of got away from us uh, late in the second half. But uh, if it was me, I would I would prefer the celebration mode. Uh, obviously, you get a, it's a huge payday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you spend money going to the playoffs. Uh, but but being able to play on national stage like that, um, national television, NFL venue, uh, it's nothing like it, man. It's nothing like it. I've had an opportunity to play, um, win one. We were at North Carolina a and and with Coach Broadway and then one here. So, And I think that was the first year in 2015. And, you know, you guys being in that playoff, that position to do that, I think a lot of that is tied to your schedule because you do play a strong out-of-conference schedule is – is the decision related to having the playoffs as a option or is it just, Hey, we play a strong out of conference schedule and that's an option because of it. Well, you know, when I got to, to central, I told AD, I want to be in charge of scheduling and being a competitor, I want to play these tough teams. And obviously I know, you know, <clears throat> you, you know, you play a bunch of them, it doesn't go right. You know, you might lose your job, but mm -hmm. if you want to be considered one of the best teams in the country, a top 25 team, you got to beat really good football teams. And we, you know, we've been able to have some huge wins uh, and out of conference play. 
So the other thing about it is when NFL scouts come here and look at our guys, you know, they want to see us playing against quality competition, not, you know, lower end guys. And we had, I think, three or four guys this past year uh, signed NFL contracts that were initially here at North Carolina Central that might have transferred out. But, um, you know, the scouts want to see that co- that level of competition. And, and and you know, obviously just competition. You don't want to play them, you know, low, lower end schools. But if I do stuff, if we do let one get away from us like we did last year, we went nine and two. We lost to uh, UCLA and we lost to Howard. Nine and two still got us in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, going to the playoffs, there's nothing to, you know, drop your head about. You know, I think that's still a great season. And I think that's one of the reasons why they named you the 11th best head coach in all of FCS football. For those who don't know, it's a ton of freaking programs in the FCS, right? Your name is near, right there by the top 10 of best of all of them, right? Man, what does that do for you when you get to see the fruits of your labor, you get to see the respect and, and, the, and the, the love for what you put out at, at Central for the last couple of years? You know, I tell you, man, I, I really appreciate it that people look at your work and, and you know, they admire you and, and things of that nature, and I'm humbled about that. But, I, you know, you win with good people. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about culture. It's all about people, whether, you know, <clears throat> players that you have here in the program – and coaches. I got a one heck of a coaching staff. You know, I don't call plays offense or defense. Uh, I have suggestions, but I I don't call plays. So I got I got a heck of a coaching staff. And then my administration, they support us, you know, and help us try to you know get what we need in here. So uh to be successful. But you know, I, I'm really appreciative for the for the guys. You know, I couldn't do any stuff by myself. So um I got a great supporting class, but I'm definitely, definitely humble. And I wanted to ask you about this because this originally was where I was going to go in segment one, but I wanted to bring it back because it was so important. It was something I really wanted to know. You lost Devin Smith, the lead receiver last year. Who's stepping up as that top guy that's going to take the charge and lead the the receiving core in 2024? We had a couple of them, man. Uh, Marquel Quick, uh, number six, uh, unbelievable speed. Uh, he got some playing time last year, but uh, he's going to be starting for us this year. And then another guy, Daryl Taylor. He was a walk on, um, walk on, and you know came through camp and earned a scholarship. So, you know we put him on money. But Daryl Taylor, he can absolutely fly. And then um, Makai Wall, <clears throat> excuse me, Makai Wall uh, transferred in from Duke. Uh, his dad and I played together, um, but he was the 300 meter hurdle champion and 110 high hurdle champion in high school, and went to Dudley High School in Greensboro. And you know he can roll too. So. Um, overall, our team speed has improved, but but we've got some weapons at the receiving court. Well, there you have it. I can't wait to see these guys at the Orange Blossom Classic, right? We have North Carolina Central, Alabama State, Sunday, September 1st. That is our game of the week, if you guys can't tell. We had Walker Harris on yesterday. We have Trey Oliver on today. We have Eddie Robinson on tomorrow. So we're going to be really, really invested in this game. And then, of course, we'll come back and we'll recap that game on Monday evening, 6.30, same time, guys. So much appreciation to you, Coach Oliver. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking time out of the work week to go ahead and do this with us. I think we got some good conversations, some good talks, in, and some really good insight. So I appreciate you for coming on. I mean, appreciate it, bro. I thank you. I thank you for what you do, man. Very professional. Uh, keep doing what you do, man. Of course. Thank you. And for everybody out there, thank you for making this your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back on Monday. Make sure you're checking them out. Miami, Florida, September 1st. Until next time that we hear each other family, take care, stay blessed, peace.